Oh, who's that on the cover of Golf Digest? Oh, it's Jason Duffner, but I'm more what focused on this article on Papago Golf Course. And speaking of Papago Golf Course, I was just texting Jesus Martinez, who is not going to be playing in hashtag the Evan 14, and I am not pleased with that. So, Jesus, you and I need to discuss your work schedule, because now that OB Golf has taken over your golf course, you never play golf, and I don't like that. So, let's not focus on Jesus, though. Let's focus on our guest of honor today. Les, how's it going, buddy? Huh? I'm doing, I'm doing. I'm doing fine, man. Good, Jason. Let's see if you can understand that. Jason, how's it going? It is good. Thanks for asking, Ricky. How awesome. are you? See, that's a proper response. Les, pay attention. Oh, okay. Yes, right. you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but you can at least teach an old dog how to be nice. <laughs> and then we and I just realized this because of how well how great Tiger is playing. That um, this is Open Championship week. Les was going to call it the British Open and make me mad, but. David had already called it that when we tested this Google Plus Hangout earlier, so I'm not going to hold it against him too much, but I would like to introduce David Perel from Top Performance Golf. David, welcome to the Friday Foursome. Thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here. This is a great opportunity. Um, excited to see what it's all about. Excellent. Well, start and kick things off by telling us who you are, what you do, and, and what Top Performance Golf is, is all about. All right. My name is... David Perel. Uh, I'm currently working in New York City for a company called Skift. Uh, we're a business-to-business -business marketing platform, uh, but I do top performance golf on the side. It's a great way for me to take my knowledge game of TrackMan, Titleist Performance Institute. Um, I've had a lot of really great experiences working with PJ Tour instructors, and it's a way for me to share what I've learned, a way for me to connect with the golf industry, meet influential people, and ultimately grow my passion for, for golf in a way that I wouldn't be able to otherwise. Very cool. Well, you just mentioned a whole bunch of really high-end technology, and we're going to talk about most, if not all, of those today. Um, Les, are you wearing your back nine hat? Because Jason's not. There he is. No, but I do wearing my back shirt. shirt. See? Okay. I'll... I'll let that slide, because this episode of the Friday Force is presented by the Back Nine Network, and it's got a retweet from them, so hashtag thanks for the support. Let's get things started with TrackMan. You said TrackMan. Tell me what you do with TrackMan, and I've had a chance to hit on it with Craig Renshaw down at the Legacy a few times, but um, what do you do with it, and kind of tell me about your experience with it. All right, well, I have a lot of experience. I worked under, last summer, worked under a guy named Terry Rolls, who uh, worked a few PJ Tour pros, a few other top people. And um, he and I, I was basically in a distant forum. I traveled to seven tournaments uh, throughout the year, taking swing videos for him. But ultimately, TrackMan is a tool. You take a guy like Tiger. Earlier today, I tweeted out. I said, you know what? I think Tiger's swing looks great. Uh, I was watching, and it does look great. But you really wouldn't be able to see what struggling with something like video. And so the reason why I'm so passionate about golf technology is because – TrackMan allows us to decipher what exactly he's struggling with and how he can improve in the most efficient and effective way possible. You don't shoot 77 and hit your driver like a, I don't even, like I'd say an amateur, but I've seen amateurs hit their drivers better than he hits it. And I think that what he needs to do, he was playing with Henrik Stenson today, and I think he should have handed his driver to Henrik and said, here, you know what to do with this. And he just snap it over his knee. I am so, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Actually, so, and he, you see, Henrik Stetson snapped a wedge over his knee yesterday. Well, he can. I know. That's why I said that. Like he, Henrik knows how to. Tiger, Tiger was thinking that. about it. Tiger was thinking about it on the 18th hole. He was just about ready to snap well, that dude. Well, when when Tiger won here in 2006, when he he hit driver one time all week. So why does he think? Well, okay, now I'm going to hit driver all week. No, don't even put it in your bag tomorrow. Just it's a it. different golf course than it was. In 2006. Yeah, well, and he's a different. He has a different golf swing than he did in 2000. This is not about Tiger. This is about David Perel. Yeah. TPI. Talk about TPI a little bit. Are you certified in TPI? No, I'm not. I just. Okay. I'm not certified, but I do have quite a bit of experience with it. Uh, definitely follow them very closely, and I've worked with a lot of TPI certified instructors. Um, I think that. Golf technology like TrackMan and uh, 3D technology is much further along than, than TPI. I don't think that, I think that in 10, 20 years, something, a program like TPI will be more commoditized because I think that it is so useful. But really what TPI is, in my eyes, is the first go we have at trying to take golf, which is traditionally 
older people, you know, the big fat guy like a John Daly. Watch out and now. And TBI is trying to say, okay, to say old guy okay how, <laughs> what are the similarities between all these great players? How can we improve our bodies to hit it farther, to hit it straighter, and ultimately prevent injuries? Okay. Well, I'm going to tee up Jason's first question with hashtag make everything. Do you know what that means, Jason? Something that I'm not accustomed to, so we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Your first question, that's their tagline, is hashtag make everything. Ah, so what are the benefits? Well, who, who says that I wanted to ask that question first? Maybe I was well, going to... I don't know. That's the, that was in the order in which you presented it to me. So, 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 so aim point is definitely a huge buzzword around the golf community lately, and I am curious um, if you can give us what you, what you feel are the biggest benefits in uh, becoming aim point trained. This for me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's all about you, well, man. I, mean, I am Aimpoint trained. I took an Aimpoint Express course uh, a few a few months ago. Um, I learned the beat about three or four years ago, which helped. I don't think that it made a huge difference, but learning about Aimpoint Express, uh, really what it does is it, essentially what it is, is for a 1% slope, you put up one finger, 2% slope, two fingers. And what it does is a lot of times... This is measured from the middle of the hole, um, but a lot of times what happens is, you know, you doubt a read, and so what Aimpoint does is it allows you to read the greens with your feet, so those optical illusions kind of go away. Using Aimpoint Express, which I do for every single putt, allows me to take a lot of the doubt and ultimately have another system to confirm my read, and it allows me to putt really well, and it allows people who I show it to to also improve their putt. Speaking of that, and I've been just bugging the crap out of Jason Sutton, and he is going to finally teach me Aimpoint Express. I was hoping we were going to be able to do it via Google Plus Hangout to be able to share with everyone in the community, but we're not. But he's going to show me how to use it, and I'm going to be making more putts, because if I made, you know, four or five more putts on during a round, I might be knocking on the door to scratch. So, But that's cool. That you, who, who did you get your, uh, your training from with Aimpoint? I got it from John Graham. He's based in Ooh. Rochester, New York. John is um, a very, Jason, very good friend of mine, so. Yeah, so Jason Sutton was actually there. It was a, it was a, uh, it was called the Guru Workshop. It was in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's because so Jason is the guru. And, uh, Jason is the golf guru, so. That's right. It was uh, Jason Kirkoguri. No, actually Kirkoguri was there. I'm forgetting who the third person was, uh, but Pretty Jason sure and John were there. John taught, oh, Andrew Rice was the third one. So, okay, uh, every single Rice, person Jason you've Sutton named, I'm like, yep. that's uh, awesome. I mean, very cool. John, very incredible minds. What's funny about John is I don't think John's played golf since he started teaching Aimpoint. Like, every time I talk to him, yeah. I'm like, hey, you play lately? And he's like, nope, I haven't played all year. So that's good that you uh, got the chance to learn that from him, though, because he's, he's about as good as it gets. So He's also okay, last... one of the nicest people I know in golf. Oh, dude, he's awesome. Well, uh, I, I was looking at your website, and, and now that you've told me it's really not completed yet, I kind of understand, but I was a little confused about what, what what you were offering on the website. And my first question was, is your golf instruction online, or is it is it uh, in person? Well, what's it coming in? Your golf instruction. Is it, uh, I mean, that's what you're advertising on, on uh, Top Performance Golf. Uh, your website is... Yeah, so, I mean, <clears throat> no, I'm not going to do any in-person golf instruction. I think, ultimately, I want to stay a hobby so I can stay in love with the game. Uh, we'll produce content and just media to help people play, but I help buddies out. I, 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 I like to think I do a pretty good job, but uh, no, I don't think that I have plans to offer you know, to be a weekend golf pro in the future. It's just a passion of mine, and I really like connecting with influencers in the golf industry, like I said, and that's why I do this. That's cool. Well, another one of your passions is travel. So you like to travel. Where have you traveled, and where do you not like to travel? Are there any places that you wouldn't want to visit? And right now I can think of one flying a Malaysian Airlines to <laughs> Ukraine. Um, what about your, well, your passion for travel? Well, I can. Uh, I'll be in Spain all fall. I'm go. I'm going to be living in Sevilla. I arrive in September and I'll leave in December. So hopefully, I can connect with some cool people there. I have a lot of family in Holland, so that's definitely one of my favorite places to be. 
Uh, but I can answer the not travel very easily. I went to China for two weeks when I was much younger, and I never want to go back to China again. Are you again. kidding me? I love is... China. Are you... Hey, man. Oh, the hey, culture man. is so crazy. Dude, I yeah. loved it. What cities were you in? I was in uh, Beijing, Xi'an, and Shanghai. Okay, so two out of the three were two of the places that I visited. I think you need to go back and give it a second <laughs> chance. Andy Griffiths, I'm sure you know him online. He, he's now him. teaching over there, and he has, well, some stories, I'm sure. It might be different living there versus visiting, but I, I think you need to go back and give it another chance. Well, maybe, but, yeah, I mean, I do have a passion. <laughs> but China, What's your favorite airline, weird. Part B? My favorite airline? Let's see. Well, I always fly United. My, I have so many miles on United that I'm just basically stuck there. That's You're married to now. Jason, yeah. next. Yeah, so so I'm I'm at a crossroads with with my son right now, and and the crossroads is between like the feel and old school teaching versus the technology teaching. And I I know that you talk on your blog, you know, kind of about the difference between the two. So I'd like for you to kind of shed some light on your opinion. Um, of you know, of the two differences, and, and which one you feel is better? Yeah, I mean, I have a good story for you. So I used to take lessons. I won't mention his name, but I used to take lessons uh, back in the Bay Area, and I was really struggling. I had no idea what was up. Um, I was taking two, three lessons a week. This guy used to be on the PGA Tour, very reputable instructor, one of the top guys in um, in the area, and. Ultimately, I decided that things weren't working. I was playing um, very competitive tournament golf, so I decided to switch, really pull a full 180 and work with somebody who really did understand golf technology and who was really part of this new school instruction movement. I get there first day. I see I'm 14 degrees into out path, and I see all the, all these issues with my body and, and why – I have all these limitations, and what and what had happened was, my body said that I should have sliced the ball, but I compensated so much that my path was 14 degrees into out. So ultimately, I switched it up, and uh, I I play golf. I played at the collegiate level, Division One, um, and so. Where at? I didn't since know I that. Where did you at, play college golf? Uh, uh, Elon why, University. Why do you I mean, interrupt I still, him? I still attend. <laughs> what? I wonder why See? Ricky interrupted you. I didn't interrupt. He kept the conversation going to answer the question. You interrupt and look what happens. Then he gets in and stops. Yeah. And now he doesn't know who's talking. Well, For sure. Like college golf because that's a big topic at my house right now. See? Yeah. I mean, it's – anyway, to answer your first question, um, I play quite rarely now, uh, especially living in New York. But, I mean, it's impossible. But just really understanding the science of golf and the mechanics – uh, through golf technology and through science, I'm able to still shoot in the low 70s pretty consistently. Awesome. Okay. Jason, back to you. I'm I, mad at less. You get another question. I'm mad at less. I still never heard <laughs> where you're playing college golf at. There you go. Good, good follow up. Elon University. Where is that at? It's in North Carolina. I, I'm actually going into my junior year. I played for a little, decided that it wasn't. For me, um, it's still something I'm proud of to say that I played collegiate golf. Um, but regardless, it's uh, it's some yeah, like I said, something I'm very proud of. But top performance golf is kind of my way of not taking the game so seriously anymore. But I guess my way of giving back. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Unless I'm going to ask one, I'm still mad at you. It, it's leaving. I'm getting better, but I'm still mad at you. Tell me in 140 characters or less what top performance golf is and why it's important to me in a tweet. Tweet me. Okay. Top performance golf provides the latest and most relevant golf instruction that will improve your game in the most entertaining way possible. I guarantee that's I about I 234 100. characters, but I'm just oh, guessing. <laughs> All right, Les, I'm still mad, but you can ask another question, I guess. Well, I think Jason then got one of my questions, and uh, so yeah. I'm just gonna, I, I'm going to switch up here. I, I, what's wrong with you, you know Tiger Woods has had the 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 best swing on the planet for 14 years. What's wrong with his golf swing now? 
I don't think that there's anything wrong with his golf swing. His golf swing is not the problem. And it, you know what? It really bothers me when people say that it is the problem. Um, in golf, you have the mental game and you have the golf swing. And ultimately, I think that there is so much pressure that he's putting on himself to do well. And he just hasn't played and been healthy for a consistent uh, for for a consistently and for a long enough period of time for that pressure to kind of disappear and for him to really just begin playing. Um, I don't remember probably in the last three or four years there hasn't been a period of time of it seems like there hasn't been a time where he's just kept playing for over a year. He always seems to be injured or you know we had the scandal so there's just always something up. So what I tell people is if you give them six months of consistent play you won't have those worries again. So to answer your question directly, there's nothing wrong with the golf swing. He just needs to play. Well, why can't he keep a driver in the fairway? Well, um, <laughs> I mean, there's something wrong with that. I mean, uh, uh, when he won the, the 2000 uh, U.S. Open, he had the best swing on the planet. And and he's went through, what, three instructors now that have just totally dismantled his, his, his golf swing. Yeah, so I mean, half of it, I'm Thank sure, is timing. mental. I, half of it, I'm sure, is mental. I can't get in Tiger's head to know exactly what he's thinking. But you know, if you really think of it, he is the best long iron player in the game. The statistics prove that. From 175 yards to 225 yards, there's nobody better than him. Absolutely. And what happens is with those long irons, you're hitting down on it one or two degrees. You know, with the driver, you're hitting up on it two degrees. So because of that. When you hit down on it, this is not something that I think we have time to explain, but when you hit down on it, the path, the club path is pushed out to the right. When you hit up on it, it's pushed to the left. So really, this is why we see so many players who are so good with the irons and or so good with the driver. You rarely see people who are so good with both. And so this is the issue. Tiger needs to sort through this. He needs to keep playing, but it is a appalling how much he struggles with the driver. I don't have a full answer for it, but that's the best answer I can give, and I think it's a pretty good one. I know what he needs to do is he needs to get a bomb tech. I'm thinking the bomb tech golf grenade driver. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm hitting I'm hitting fairways left and right. Hashtag pull the pin. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think good about that. Well, I, I, don't, I don't want to talk about Nike either. Um, so... You are on every social network, it seems, on the planet. Do you have a favorite? And if so, which one and why? All right. So what I, I love Twitter. I think that Twitter is, Twitter is a relationship, unlike the other social networks. Twitter gives you what you put back into it. And what Twitter for me, at first, I didn't love it like I do now. I have been, I've been on Twitter since about 2010, but I've, I've used it very consistently since... November, Twitter is about following the exact right people. What I'm currently working on is following less people. And But what I've been able to do is curate my following list. And I have my personal account, which is more focused on tech and social media, and then my golf account, which is top performance golf, obviously. And through those accounts, I follow exactly the people who I want to follow. And I don't get a lot of noise that I would get on a Facebook or an Instagram um, and ultimately, I'd like to begin using Google Plus more. It's just a matter of time that I have. And um, right now, I just use Twitter a lot. I use Instagram a lot. Uh, but I think that my next platform that I'm really going to focus on is Google Plus, um, especially because of search engine optimization and stuff like that. And with Perel.com, which is my personal website, and topperformancegolf.com, I think that Google Plus will be very beneficial for me when when those websites are launched. So what is Perel.com versus Top Performance Golf? What are you doing differently on there? Good question. Perel.com is going to be... Um, I've gotten very into photography. I just picked up a new Canon camera, so I think that I might use it to sell prints, but also to grow my own personal brand. I'm still in college. I'm going to be getting out of college looking for a job and uh, preferably something in media, maybe marketing. I don't really know yet, but I think that this day and age, especially moving forward, if you don't have a website, it's, it's much harder to be, to be deemed relevant. So 
I don't really know what is going to be on the website. I just know I'm going to push content on there and kind of like what I do with other social media networks, I'm going to read a lot about what what other people suggest and see what's and see what works. That's awesome. Hashtag content is king. Jason, I like your next question. Well, if you ask that one. Well, I'm assuming that you are talking about what is your favorite piece of training technology that you are currently using. Bingo. Okay, well, um, Training technology, I think that I have a few a few things to say. Um, I think that knowing knowing your alignment is very important. So I think that almost the most beneficial one is my alignment stick. I use that all the time. But I actually don't hit balls with the TrackMan that much. Um, I don't really use training devices. I just use video very heavily. So what I would recommend to people is get on the TrackMan every now and then. Go see your local Titleist Performance Institute professional so you can be working in the gym bet between the times that you meet. And also make sure that your lie loft adjustments are right. I have a meeting on August 2nd with a guy named Kirkaguri who's based in New York. Um, I can just tell that the lie loft is a little bit – well, the lies is a little bit off. And I just think that you can get on TrackMan every now and then. You can get working with a TPI certified professional – and then you can make sure that your clubs are properly fitted for you. You're really going to do the right thing. And I think that that is my tip for every golfer from a weekend warrior to a very serious player. Tell Kirk I said hi. I like him a lot. He's a good dude. How about for an 8-year-old? For an 8-year-old, uh, speed training, go get him playing other sports. Golf doesn't matter at all. I would say go play hockey, go play lacrosse. Those two are both great. Go play baseball. Go play basketball. Um, ultimately, when you're that age, what you do and how and how physical you are is very important. But you actually, from from what I've read, golf really isn't that important to be played at that age. I have a lot of friends who absolutely crushed the ball, and it's all because of what they did at that age. Most of them played hockey uh, or other sports very seriously. And just to reiterate, it's not about golf at that age. Ooh. Good, good thought. Les, I don't know if I like your next question because of the way he played today, but you've got an open championship question. <laughs> well, it's real simple. Who's going to win the open? <laughs> um, I'm. My bet is. Oh man, people are going to see this afterwards. So my bet. Uh, hopefully, my prediction isn't too off. I think Rory's going to go out shoot 71 or 72 tomorrow. I think he'll have a two, two or three shot lead going into Sunday. And I think that he'll shoot 69 to win the Open Championship by four on Sunday. Wow, wire to wire, huh? Specific prediction. Do you do you think Big Justin prediction. can give him any problems or? Yeah, I, I mean people people will be creeping on his back, which I think is a good thing. I think there's going to be pressure applied, and I think he's going to struggle. Um, you know, we've seen that he averages a 69 scoring average on Friday, 72.8 scoring average, or 69 scoring average on Thursday, 72 on Friday. I think that he's going to struggle tomorrow, uh, even though he played well today. How do you know that? <laughs> How do I know that? Yeah. <laughs> I was very prepared to write a blog about it yesterday, sat down oh, okay. and writing, and I didn't. Uh... Speaking of your blog, how often do you blog, and what do you blog about? There is no answer to that whatsoever. I blog when I feel like blogging. Uh, which is every now and then, you know, if I have the opportunity to meet somebody very influential, I'll write a piece about it. Uh, what do I blog about? I blog, one, about instruction. If something that people say or something that I hear on TV I think needs to be corrected, which happens all the time. Um, and I also love to blog about marketing in the golf industry. I think that Chad Coleman at Callaway Golf does a – absolutely tremendous job so I wrote a blog about him and then I just like I said did my piece on Corey Bradburn Golf Digest. Hashtag Chad. I have not met him but I talk to him all the time on Twitter so if you ever want to write a piece on me I'd allow that. Just so hey, you know. I'm you serious. Content. You might be my next one. <laughs> if you need content. Wow, that was bold. Hey, you can't, you, you gotta ask, right? I mean, why not? All you can do is no. Jason, uh, any yeah, more questions from so you? Nice, but no, I'm good. For the Chad back in two weeks. Shut up. Tell him I said hi because I, I, I you have to. Well, I mean, write a list of all the people that you have to say hi to because you need. To, I've met Kirk though. I've met him several times, but 
I literally like Chad. Like I, I feel like I feel like I know him just because of the conversations we've had with, uh, with Twitter. But Callaway is a preferred partner of Troon, so we do a lot of work with those guys. And um, but I've never, never physically met him. I've not met DJ Pajowski either. And I, uh, we did the hangout with him, a Friday foursome from the tour. Do you know DJ? Have you met him? Yes. Okay. So you physically met him? Jeez. No, I haven't met oh, okay. any of these people except for. Oh, Lawrence. nice. Cool. So, Jason, no more questions? Back nine time. Come on, man. Hold on. No, we got five minutes. Les, any more questions? No, I've got mine in. Okay, See? and I, I've i got more questions. Well, who, go for it. Who are and what do Matthew and Austin do? Um, okay, so Matthew's coming in today. Uh, Matthew is in charge of all creative content, so he created the website. He does media content. We're actually, I think, going to begin a... a a, P, uh, a segment with top instructors on the East Coast and ha and produce video content for them and promote it through top performance. So Matt will be in charge of all that. Austin, uh, first of all, his family his family owns Copay Country Club in New York, which is sponsor of Top Performance Golf. So we promote them whenever possible. And Austin is in charge of all business. And if we ever move to um, trying to bring in money and bring in revenue, Austin's job will get a hell of a lot harder. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, well, Jason alluded to it, the back nine. The back nine are nine rapid-fire questions. Answer them as fast as I ask them, and there's Bring one question on, that gets asked every week. The one question that gets asked every week I put earlier into the back nine, so if you answer this in the way that I don't deem appropriate, we can just end the interview. So, <laughs> all right, you ready? Go for it. What is your favorite golf course? Paso Tiempo, Santa Cruz, California. All right. Sorry. Good call. And true Good call. North Pinnacle. Ooh, why, okay, hang on. Pause the back nine. Why Pinnacle over Monument? Um, I think that I think Pinnacle is just a better test of golf. Okay, I'll also, allow that. Okay. I've played 36 at True North three times, and I've always played Pinnacle first, so I've always played better at Pinnacle. Oh, see, so I feel like I'd play better after I played Pinnacle. Like, because Monument then would seem easier because I've played what I think is the harder of the two. Although I do mm -hmm. think that the third hole, the Monument hole, is the best hole on the 36 hole. That hole rocks. Well, one, because it's the signature hole, but okay, back to the, the back nine. Have you ever had an ace? No, I actually haven't even come that close. Really? Pepsi or Coke? Uh, uh, yeah, I really haven't. What Pepsi or Coke? Uh, uh, yeah, Coke, no doubt. And I and Les stole one of my questions that who is going to win the Open Championship this week, and you've already answered that. So I'm going to have to find another question. Speaking of majors, though, will Tiger break Jack's record? No, I can't believe I'm saying <laughs> no. He, I can't either because that's where this interview ends. But the second question that will make up the back nine: Why? Why will he not win 19? Yeah. Uh, I'm really worried that injuries are going to catch up to him. I'm just right. It scares me. I he's kind of becoming the bionic man, man, though. Oh, my gosh. They're putting a new back in him, and he's got new hips and new knees and yeah. all kinds of stuff. So, Okay, so you said... Yeah, well... Okay, so you said you play a lot of golf. What's your index? Uh, my index... Man, I don't even know, but it's probably about plus one. Okay. That's really, really good. Favorite LPGA <laughs> Tour player? Uh, LPGA, Paula Kramer, no doubt. Okay. I want to ask why, too, but we've only got two <laughs> questions. <on. laughs> what driver is in your bag? I have the Ping G20 with a Mitsubishi Oban shaft, which rocks. Ooh, good shaft. And what is next for David Perel? And lunch is not next, because I saw you checked in on Foursquare a little bit ago at Chipotle, so... <laughs> Yes, that's true. Um, <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I don't know if I want to do golf, travel. I don't know if I want to go back into television. Um, I, I hosted, I was on television once a week on ESPN2 in North Carolina this, this fall, and I have no idea what's next. That is awesome. That is the best answer you could possibly give to that question. That's fantastic. Well, Les, thank you for showing up and, and causing drama with the way Tiger played today. Jason, <laughs> thank you for wearing your Back Nine t-shirt. David, thank you so much for your time. I know that I told you that half an hour was going to fly by. It's already been 30 minutes. 
It really crazy. did. Next week, we have a awesome guest. Jason, do you know who we have next week? Les isn't going to be here, so maybe we should have some fun with the guest next week. Do I have see? not looked that far ahead. Well, you should, because it's only seven days from now, but it's Jennifer Jennings from, um, I think it's, do you even know her? You might know her, David. Have you met her? Jennifer Jennings? I don't know the name of her. Yeah, the like the that's swing. Like, I don't know. She just posts a lot of fun pictures on Instagram. Like that's really all I know. I need to do some research. But I met her. Uh, I met her in another hangout from the PGA show this year, and that's actually where we got connected back in January. So it'll be fun. But regardless, so I'm still mad at him, but I'm gonna text him and let him know that I talked about him in today's hangout. But as Jesus Martinez says, make more birdies. And he didn't say that. He stole that from the best golf movie of all time. But David, thank you. Last Jason, and we will see you guys next week. Thanks, guys.